So we're going to stay with the assumptions that markets are complete for a while. That simplifies a lot of things. And then we'll go on later to incomplete markets. So assume that markets are complete. Let's think about pricing other securities. The price of uh, any payoff, a payoff here is just a bunch of contingent claims. It specifies how much you get in each state of nature. So the price of any payoff is the sum of the contingent claims prices, what each payoff is worth, times the payoff in each state of nature. To make that look prettier, something like what we've seen before, why don't we just multiply and divide by probabilities and define M of S, define the discount factor as the contingent claims price divided by probabilities. Then we represent the prices of the payoffs by expected discounted payoff. There's our friend, the discount factor. Now, how much did we have to do? What ingredient did we need to do that? Uh, it's called the law of one price, the statement that the price of a bundle is equal to the a la carte menu, how much uh, it costs if you buy each element as a contingent claim. That is an assumption, and it, it reflects a sort of an absence of arbitrage, a little bit of rationality by our investors. So let's think about what we've done. One of our big questions is, when can we represent prices by expected discounted payoffs? When does there exist a discount factor? We've just proved a theorem about when a discount factor exists. When can we represent a set of prices and payoffs by price equals expected discounted payoffs? Uh, in this case, the theorem goes, if the markets are complete, if the law of one price holds, then a discount factor exists. And in fact, we know how to construct the discount factor. You just take the contingent claims prices and divide by probabilities. That tells us something philosophical. It tells us that price equals expected discounted payoff is really fairly innocuous. And all the action the, in, in asset pricing has to come from tying the discount factor to other data, not just this bundling. When we do this in, with continuous states, not just discrete one, two, three, four, five, this is especially important because when you at, integrate over states, you need some measure. So in fact, typically we don't use raw contingent claims prices. We multiply and divide by probabilities. And that's why uh, the, the, we use the words state price density sometimes to refer to what I've called the discount factor. That's what it's doing here. It's just tell, it's telling us the state prices in a way that we can integrate and then multiply by probabilities in order to find the value of something. Mm -hmm.